Logan GME investors. Uh, this one won't be as long. This will be a bit quicker. This is a chart that we're looking at, right? This chart everyone's looking at. Um, there's a little bit of an update with on my end, right? With the data, obviously. First of all, um, there's another flag here, obviously. There's a base up, base up. Um, I've seen a couple double flag patterns. Uh, they don't generally do well. Um, th the main reason why I've noticed is because the second flag usually um, takes out so much energy that the first flag doesn't get, uh, like it doesn't pan out anymore because a lot of the trading is, it'll get up to peaks, but it won't ever surpass the pull on the first flag usually is what will happen. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible. Like obviously there's stocks that do it and do it well. Um, usually big money moving behind it. Uh, there has to be some sort of uh, reasoning, right? But in GME, sadly, I don't see much. And I understand, you know, everyone's like, oh, you're still bearish, this and that. Um, on the fundamentals, yeah. You guys sure, you know, raise money. To me right now, it's the equivalent of like a super expensive shitty spec. Like a shitco spec. Um, all Ryan Cohen needs to do is acquire a company. And then, you know sell it to you guys uh, to buy more shares as like hey this is a good idea merger acquisition blah 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 and he gets out on a pump and then he he says he did his job right oh i improved gme when i showed up it was you know in this state now it's in this state kind of like you know the whole chewy scenario but i think that you know everyone's gonna have their own opinions and that's fine you can have your own i'll have my own but um i think a lot of things went out the windows this afternoon including technicals you know I, I i've been trading gme on technicals a lot i i use a lot of uh, modeling software in order to get to where i you know feel comfortable with uh taking risky positions right um so like i said in my previous video this was a short up here um this is the daily chart i'm gonna turn my uh i'm gonna turn the super trends off for now i'm gonna turn indicators off and we're down here not up here, down here. And that's not good, you know, for considering uh, DFE came back, posted positions. Um, I, I think it says a lot that uh, obviously he wasn't able to post to Wall Street Bets. Most people don't know the reasoning why, but um, from what I understand, based on comments and certain replies to certain threads and whatnot, um, he got automated. Um, it seemed kind of spammy from what I, you know, inferred on the messages, which kind of is interesting to me because it's like, you know, he, he's kind of doing this in a very fast, has to, it, it's almost like he has to time it a certain way. If any of you guys have seen uh, Back to the Future, it's kind of like when he's setting off the charges inside of the train, right? He has to put in a certain colored brick of uh, incendiary device every so often into the uh, engine of the train in order to keep getting it up to speed. And it feels like maybe he's being thrown off on his timing. And I'm not trying to assume, you know, I'm not in his shoes. I don't know exactly what's going on in his head, but it seems like this was not the expected outcome. You know, I'd understand if we ended up up here, that would be an expected outcome. And, and the reason why um, I think this is what's happening is because he's, he's kind of showing his hand too much. And I don't even mean that to just retail. I mean, you know, other players, Andrew Left, for example, was commenting that he shorted again because apparently he shorted back here. Um, and apparently he closed this one and he's short again. So this type of information, it's like, you know, asymmetrical information warfare kind of deal. And you have to always keep on top of your opponents because like I've keep repeating to everyone here, um, there's no friendlies in the market, I guess, as far as there are as people in the trade with you, but I'm saying like, honestly, you're trading a zero sum game. So if, if you're winning, someone else is losing. If you're losing, someone else is winning, right? And what I want to get out with this is the same thing I did yesterday and I'm back on in May. Like, this is just my PSA. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not qualified to be. I didn't go to school for it, anything like that. I'm very self-taught at this. But what I want to say is don't become like some people became bag, bag holders back here, right? 
and they're complaining about it on Reddit and other places like Twitter and whatnot. But don't become another bag holder. Again, you know, like if, if you're doing good on your trades, you should essentially be doing what DFV is doing, which is at some point you close them for profit and then you make trades again. And what I want to say by that is that's already been proven to be true because of this article that came out. Now, I understand what it says about, you know, kicking them off the platform. That's it. I'm going to save that for in a couple minutes. So I'll comment on that. But right now, the main important part is if you read this article, he played May. He allegedly, according to the article, he bought a cause before the run up, before the tweeting. And that's what they're uh, saying might be, you know, a little bit possible manipulation. And they don't want to be associated with that. Now, that being said, if that's true, he's playing y'all your exit liquidity along with anybody else buying this you know there's a taxi driver out there he's hearing people talk about uh gamestop he's not really tech savvy xyz jk but he's buying it over here at 65 dollars while everyone else is selling and shorting <laughs> and here's the thing dfv did it you know he made a profit and there's even a, a tweet by uh snorlax from U unusual whales i believe if I'm not mistaken, that I, I was tracking myself and I was like, could this, you know, could this have been D DFE? Well, now it seems like that information matches it. And that was, in fact, possibly DFE. I'll show you uh, the tweet. But basically, we have to understand that this is not, you know, everyone on the same team. You guys think you are, and I, I mean, to a certain degree, maybe. But uh, right now, that's not the case. Look, so the whale just closed right here. And he went for, on 424, he bought calls at 36, and then on 515, he closed them for 2184. 908K to 44 mil. That's most likely the trade that E Trade was talking about. Could be. At least on, it's on my radar. And then the main thing that we run into is if that's the case, then again, the technicals are out the window. Even this data I can show you and, and share with you is out the window, but I'm going to share it anyway because I'm the type of person that I want you to have all possible information that you can have, and that way you can make your own decision, and that's how it should be. You shouldn't be listening to people saying hold to infinity, and you shouldn't be listening to anybody out there overly bearish saying, hey, short every rip because you're going to get burnt that way too. Try to be smart about it. If you can't be smart about it, then maybe I don't know if trading's for you. Uh, this is what how it ended right obviously there's some extended trading hours over here which it's trading right now so boom dip and then we go back down and what I'm trying to get with this is currently it's back here in the supply zone at real uh, trading hours at least right now in the pre-markets moving up but here's the thing you need to understand that this right here some people bought in at 40 thinking it was going to go up at open even I myself yesterday said, hey, I might buy it open to short. Nope, glad I stayed out. I didn't make a single trade on GME today. Actually, I didn't make a single trade. I was too busy watching the hoopla in the Berkshire, which, you know, I, I'm not even going to entertain the thought of a tin foil that the apes are talking about. They want to associate everything in the world has to do with GME, apparently. It's like uh, some, some Buddhist monk could die on the other side of the planet. And they're like, oh, it has to do with GME. So back to this, um, you guys need to be smart. And I say this to everyone out there, not just apes, anyone trading this. And it's like, use whatever you have to your advantage, data, technicals, indicators, whatever you rely on to do your style of trading, you need to make sure you're executing it as best as you can. Don't listen to the you know peanut gallery essentially. And here's the problem that we have. So yesterday at morning, you have 40K shares that were allegedly pot, most likely sold because it was that bid at the price of 34.78, right? And then this is what I find interesting that there was a search, but no match for a trade. So someone was wanting to trade either buy or sell 354K, 12 mil of GME. And that mm, sounds like someone we know, right? Someone that's already shown us their poker hand. But I'm not getting into assumptions right now. I just want to go back to the technicals. Um, because that's honestly all you can use to kind of trade sometimes. For example, they did well on the options flow today. Um, the calls took up here. Couldn't really do much 
If you notice, the, the price action was not favorable considering how extreme the calls got. And here's the thing. Here's, here's the thing that people don't understand. I feel that just as DFU was desperate to post to, um, to some subreddit and get to garner some sort of attention, I feel that he's shifting his positions around now because he's kind of in a tough spot. For example, there was another big buyer for, I believe it was 40s at the end of, I think next this week, next week, something like that. I'll have to go look for it, but 440 strike, you know, and it's, it's like, that's, you got to think about it and you got to go, well, what is he doing? Because it kind of acts like, it, it looks like he's acting a little bit, not like his usual self and he's acting a little bit haphazardly, right? And that's just my theory. Let's see. Pretty sure it was, you know, let's do over a, over a mil. Yeah, you have you have certain moves like this, but I could have sworn I saw some. I think it was 40s. I don't know if there were sweeps, maybe. So let's see here. Yeah, there's there's quite a few being bought. Like, and I I believe we saw some into the close. So I'd have to go. Uh, 100% check that but what I'm trying to get at is back to the point um, Honestly, do you this you know the money you're making is for yourself. It's your trading account You open it you put your risk out there with your capital, etc, etc, etc So don't don't get caught hopped up in all this BS Do you if you made money, but it's not as much money as the guy next to you just be happy because he's risking more by staying in longer or higher or whatever you want to call it what I want to get out is uh, get out is this. See this drop right here in the options and a call contracts. That was a lot of selling. Um, about midway down this um, candle, I believe, is when roughly the news was breaking. And here's why I said at the beginning of this, I'll talk to you about technicals, but you're gonna have to figure out your own what's gonna happen. I guess quote unquote your own exit strategy, right? And the reason why is because I can only provide you data from then on. That's up to you. You're gonna be the one that pulls the trigger. I don't think technicals. I don't. And, and you know, here's the thing. I could, you know, I think people are gonna FOMO in regardless. There are always gonna be people that FOMO. There's always that uh, trying to be cool, uncle or aunt or someone that's out of the loop, isn't good with technology, and they bought GME over here at 65 or back in January, uh, like 400 plus and. They were just trying to be part of something, be part of the movement or some crap like that. And it's like, there's always going to be people there, whether it's buyers, your sellers, whether it's sellers, whether there's buyers. But what I'm trying to get at is make sure that you are just happy with the end result that you obtain for yourself. That being said, this is a new number. For those of you that have been watching my charts, I have numbers on here that are kind of targets, right? And I even, you know, again, I'm not fully 100% bearish. This is that low probability number up here still. It's still there. That's the, the this flag fulfilling. But I just spoke about this flag now. And like I said, a flag within a flag isn't always usually good. Um, I think even, I mean, even DFE might know this. But what's happening is if this flag pans out, this is the new number. It was attempting for 51.90, right? That would be a nice, I guess, uh, fully playing out of this flag. The problem I see is there's that supply zone right there. So it might not even get all the way up here. It might end up right below it. And then, you know, that'll be that, depending on a whole bunch of factors. In the last video, I, you know, made a joke and I even clipped, put a clip on my YouTube and it's I eat my own words because I literally said in the last video I said DFE for all I know DFE could show up tomorrow and start tweeting for a week straight and he didn't start tweeting but he did show position so I mean again no one can predict the guy right I'm not trying to predict the guy I'm just trying to give you technicals data and information about the stock and what I think I might do and what I think it will do the stock that being said this this is the monkey wrench and I feel like that might have been why that person that was buying at the end of the day, it kind of feels like it might be him. 
trying to make sure this stays somewhat afloat, but the problem I see is E-Trade might cut them off at some point anyway. And for those of you that are constantly going on on the crazy talk about, hey, you know, uh, it's because they don't have enough shares to, to cover X, Y, Z, J, K. No, what might have happened is the, the people that took his money for the options, right, aka the, the actual finance department, I guess you could call them, um, they took the money. They're like, hey, yeah, we can execute these trades or at least uh, try to, right? That, that's, a, that's a thing. But now, the thing is, when he bought that, it was, he wasn't tweeting yet. So that changes things. The minute he starts tweeting, it's done. Like, legal's going to come in and say, hey, we don't want that. And the reason why is because he, you, he gets called in, con in front of Congress, he gets sued. Then you're going to get sued for being this, like, complicit party to helping him have done all this all these damages to you if you were short or whatever i don't care but here's the thing before that this is part of e-trades terms of service i have on the screen right now and i already i shared this last night in, in my discord but here's the deal i already had the theory that he was gonna get uh dna anyway do not exercise and I, I felt like they were going to close some of his positions. And the reason why, you can read about it here. I'll leave this. Uh, there's a link up here. I'll leave it in the description below. But I tweeted it as well. But, you know, this is correct. Like, what's he going to do? He doesn't have the money. You know, previously he could exercise and he could do this and that because he did it. Um, a cash exercise with his gains, right? But now, cashless exercise unless he's got money in another account or something which you know it's probable but basically right now this this is the problem if you want to read about it you'll find out but basically it's saying that he need you know the stock price has to stay at a certain price obviously for him to be doing well and he needs a certain amount of um of, of movement coming in to buy his bags essentially because think about it he holds 83 percent of the open interest and it's like well how do you move that who who do you move that to <laughs> so again a lot of this is uh it's gonna get very interesting i would definitely recommend a read here the only new line i added was 5190 uh, my super trends are still you know still there still doing work you know, this is the one hour and the two hour. Um, personally, myself, like if, if I'm, I'm, I have, again, I haven't taken a position right now this run, but I'm looking and, and I know people aren't going to want to hear this, but I'm looking to short. Initially, I was going to short today. I did not because to be honest, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I was probably hopeful for you, you people invested in GME as well. And I was going to short it from 92 if it got there. Or 64 again if it got up there where this supply zone right here basically but it didn't even get there so i didn't get a chance to short um i'm gonna be looking for a new entry again today see what happens if it fails the supply zone uh, i might take a quick short down to see what reaction it gets at this uh, what we previously called the two-hour support on the super trend if it fails that and it gets down here well i mean it's kind of game over at that point Kind of feels like this pump run is uh, run its course. Um, in order to invalidate this flag, let me actually double check and give you guys that number. In order to invalidate this flag right here, the 5190 target, um, we'd have to break down. Again, I'd recommend using the, the trend line here and the supply zone as guidance, but it's 980 or something like that. It's, I think I'm off by like three cents or it's somewhere in that area in the 980s. Just like I said, this one before, if I'm not mistaken, this one's like in the 1080s, uh, $11 range. So I wish you all good luck. I actually do want you all to make money. There's a lot of people that have always hated me because I've been, you know, I was previously bullish on GME in February 2021 when it was 40 bucks, um, even after the squeeze. But here's the deal. I'm not here to celebrate you losing money. Um... If, if you post on Wall Street Bets and it was a dumb play, yeah, I'll laugh about it. And you can laugh at my dumb plays too. But I honestly wish you all the best in life, whether it be in health, happiness, or money. Um, I, again, I do get a lot of hate, but I don't subscribe to those crazy theories of, hey, 
we're going to make millions per share. And I think anybody spreading that sort of uh, rhetoric is dangerous. I don't think they're exactly your friend because a lot of those people spread those things, or at least I'm going to say some of those people, I'm going to say a lot. A lot of them spread it out of ignorance, but some of those people are doing it maliciously because they just want you to come in and buy their bags. That being said, remember, at some point we're all buying DFE's bags. <laughs> so uh, keep it in mind. And again, I wish you all the best. I honestly uh, hope you all make money in this, apes included. Sadly, I don't see a lot of them waking up. They're uh, using this E-Trade and uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway to try to say, oh no, look, it's more proof of shorts and crime and fuckery. And it's like, give it up, make money. Do you understand how much money you could have made if you were playing GME up and down all these times? I do. I didn't play every single one, but I played a few of those and it was pretty, uh, pretty fun. First of all, obviously I'm having fun. I'm not over here crying about crime and buy buttons and no. And second of all, I made money. So, you know, I didn't come out with a bad outcome, which is what I was talking about initially, which is again, make sure that the outcome you're running into is one that you want. Uh, apparently it's not doing so hot over here. Yeah. I had a nice little pump and then we'll see. I'm not going to discount it yet. That's not what I'm doing right now on this video live or anything. Um, I just, again, here's the look. Uh, the options did go negative a few times here. If they start going negative again, well, obviously that's not good. At some points there were, there were puts coming in with ad ask and some of them were sweeps and whatnot. So again, read this article, understand E-Trade was just doing what it needed to do in order to not absorb the risk of what this article states itself. Like it doesn't want to get caught in that. Plus, um, on top of that, they don't want to get, you know, sued for enabling him to do whatever he's doing. Um, my last point will be previous, you know, my opinions of DFV have changed over time as my, as have my opinions of Ryan Cohen or GameStop. Personally, right now, um, all three of them are kind of, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think I'd invest money long with them. Uh, at least not in GME, like in this same condition. Personally, I, I think uh, he is pumping based off the article here and, and obviously the moves, um, these moves that were back in May. That means essentially he did pump himself up here to make money, bring it down. And, and you know, he's doing this in multiple waves in order to, I'm assuming, increase his net worth. I, maybe he's got a goal in mind. Maybe he does want to be in a billionaire club or something. Um, I honestly, if it were me, I don't know if I'd be okay with it, but you know, to each their own moral compass, uh, goals, whatever it may be aside. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate on people. That's, uh, everyone's different, right? So to end my talk here, like I said, the, the main thing I do is I keep watch on still the hour or two hour chart with the both super trends for one hour and two hour, because this is looking to be your support right now. Um, overhead above, like I said, the first target in sight is 5190. If it breaks above this, uh, supply zone of around 48 to 50. That being said, I wish you all luck. Uh, have a good one. I'll keep watching pre-market a little, but I'm probably going to go take a nap. And like I said, I usually wait till it's inflated. I see this flip sales start popping up here, you know, and there you go. That's when I jump in. Uh, another thing is, uh, I also wanted to mention, I believe it was uh, a couple people out there were, were giving very valid points for, you know, if he is forced off of E-Trade, how long will it take for his um, positions and whatnot to be moved somewhere else? Which broker would take them? You know, which broker wants to take on the risk, either legal or financial? And aside from that, you know, it'd probably be a bigger desk. For all we know, he might end up at Robinhood or Jane Street or something like that. Um, and again, you know, th that's just, you know, putting a lot on the table as far as decision wise for all of you that are with a position in GME or are going to have a position at some point today or in the week or whatever, but definitely, uh, let it mull, think about it, try to be smart. And I, again, I wish you all the best. Have a good one.